Hey everyone. So last time we got into Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And basically we went over how electricity is produced in one place and kind of hinted at the fact that it could be transported anywhere else to do useful work. Now, if that didn't blow your mind, well, you're not paying attention. But there is another side of Faraday's law, and that is, can we figure out the direction of the induced current? This is going to come into play when we talk about alternating current. But you know what it's really about? It's really about a lot of people can plug numbers into a formula and figure it out. Not everybody has the spatial ability in order to figure out what the direction of the current will be. Now, it's another right-hand rule. Our favorite. Another right-hand rule where we can determine the direction of the current induced in a coil caused by a changing magnetic field. Hey, you still there? Good. Now, last time, we looked at the formula. The EMF, also known as the voltage, everybody. We know it's voltage is equal to negative N times the rate of change of flux. The negative sign is just giving the direction, which we are going to talk about today. Now, what's the flux with an L? Flux is just the B field perpendicular to the area. It's measured in Weber's Tesla meter squared. All right, so we went through these notes last time. What I would like to do is right now for you to take a page of notes. Then we're actually going to take a look at a Khan Academy video. I know I'm farming it out. But here's the thing, I don't think you're going to believe me. I want another voice out there to explain this to you. And then we're going to come back and roll through six examples. If two-thirds of you get it by the end of class, that's incredible. Incredible. That's a tribute to your teach. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's because you guys are smart. Um, hopefully, we'll get it by the end. If not, we'll get it tomorrow or the next day. You guys always do. So. Let's get to it. Get that nice clean sheet of paper out. So, Lenz's Law. I would like you to write down this definition. First, let me read it. Many of you are pushing pause right now. Good. So go get a piece of paper. Yeah, you know who I'm talking to. Let's go. Now, Lenz's Law is named after the Baltic German hmm. physicist named Heinrich Lenz, who formulated it in 1834. It says, the direction of the induced, the direction of the current induced in a conductor by a changing magnetic field due to Faraday's law of induction will be such that it will create a field that opposes the change that produced it. Did you get that? Yeah, I didn't think so. Now, let's go back to our reading skills. And one thing you got to do when you're facing something with too many words, is let's get rid of them. So let's not worry so much about lens. Good. Now, the direction of current induced in a conductor by changing magnetic field due to Faraday's law of induction, well, that's kind of understood, will be such that it will create a field that opposes the change that produced it. All right, let's try that one more time. Maybe this time. I'm going to substitute in a word here, um, such that the wire OK, ready? Write this down. Lenz's law. The direction of current induced in a conductor by a changing magnetic field will be such that the wire will create a field that opposes the change that produced it. Crystal clear. Sort of. Now, before we get into how the right hand rule applies to that, let's take a look at what we're talking about when it comes to magnetic flux. Flux is the B perpendicular to the area. Now, flux can be changed two different ways. We can increase or decrease the B field. If you just look at the formula, by changing B, we would change the flux. Now, how does one increase or decrease the B field? The simplest way is to move a magnet closer or farther away. Hmm. 
Yeah, no kidding. You move the magnet, if you're closer to the coil, the magnetic field is going to get stronger. The f you pull it away, the magnetic field gets weaker. Easy. Now, how else can we change the flux? Well, we could change the area. Now, if we're going to change the area, basically, you can pull the loop in or out of the magnetic field. Keeping up with me? We could also rotate that loop. We'll get into that in a little while. That's it. All of the different diagrams you're going to see are essentially one of these two things. Either changing the magnetic field by moving the magnet closer or farther away, or taking that loop and pulling it into a magnetic field, thus increasing the cross-sectional area, or pulling it out of a magnetic field, decreasing it. That's it. Now, Lenz's law in words, honestly, to someone of my intellectual ability, sounds like gibberish. But once you apply another right-hand rule to it to keep things straight, we can figure it out. Now. This time, I'm going to let Khan Academy have the first crack at it. You ready? So right over here, I've here it comes. a square loop of a conductor. Let's say it's a wire, and it's stationary, and it's sitting in a magnetic field. And I've drawn a few vectors that represent the magnetic field. And you can see, at least on the surface that is defined, or this contoured by the wire, that the magnetic field looks constant. So if we just had this scenario, not, nothing too special going on. But it becomes interesting if I were to actually change the flux going through the surface. So both of these pictures right over here, they actually show the same scenario where we have increased the flux. We have increased the flux at these points on the surface defined by the wire. At every point, the magnetic field has now got, gotten stronger. So we have increased the flux. So let me write that, the flux. We use the Greek letter phi to usually denote flux. The flux of the magnetic field, the flux of the magnetic field has gone up. And we know from Faraday's law that when you have a change in your flux, that that's going to, be in, that's going to induce a current in the loop. And so an interesting question is, what direction is that current actually going to go in? We have two options. The current could go, the current, let me find a nice color for the current. The current could go in the, the current could go in the clock, in the clockwise direction, or it could go in the or it could go in the counterclockwise direction. So which of these two do you think the current will actually go in? Well, let's think a little bit about it. We know that a current flowing through a wire actually on its own will induce a magnetic field above and beyond the magnetic field that's already there. So let's think about the type of magnetic field that this orange current would, would actually induce. So if it's going in the counterclockwise direction, remember we use the right hand rule. I can take my right hand point my thumb in the direction of the current. So let me see if I can do that. So my thumb in the direction of the current. And then my hands, my hands are going to loop, or I should say my fingers are going to loop in the direction, in the direction of the magnetic field. So when I do that with my right hand, so my right hand looks something like that. Thumb in the direction of the current right over here. We see that it shows a magnetic field being induced that would that would wrap around like that. Or if we were to show it, if we were to sample it points right on the surface, the magnetic field that would be induced would look something like this. And I'm just doing it at some sample points. So notice, it would be additive. It would be additive, whoops. It would be, it would be, it would be additive to the existing magnetic field. In fact, it would increase the flux even more. And in fact, at these points, these vectors would increase even more. These vectors, let me see if I can draw that these vectors would increase even more. Well, what would that do? If the flux increases even more, then the current is going to increase. The current is going to increase even more, which is going to make the flux increase even more, and which makes the current increase even more. And you would have this never-ending cycle where the current keeps increasing and the flux keeps increasing. And you would have this energy that's appearing out of nowhere, which would violate the law of conservation of energy. And so that's a pretty good argument for why you would not 
that's a pretty good argument for why we would not expect the counter the counterclockwise scenario. We would not want the current that's been induced to induce a magnetic field that goes in the same direction as our increase in flux. So just by deductive reasoning, we know that this is going to be the scenario. And let's see what think about what happens here. We can do the right hand rule again. We take our right hand, point our thumb in the direction of the current, point our thumb in the direction of the current, and we see if we do that, if we do that with our right hand, well now this would this would induce a magnetic field that would decrease the flux. So it would it would produce a magnetic field. The current right over here would produce a magnetic field that's going downward. The current in that direction would also when you take your when you take your right hand and you were to put it along here, once again if you're going in the if you are going in the counterclockwise or sorry, if you're going in the clockwise direction over here, that too, when you do your right hand rule right over here, your fingers would coil around that way. And so once again, when you look at the surface, it would produce, it would induce a magnetic field that is going in that direction. And so it would have the induced magnetic field from the induced current will go against the change in flux. And this makes sense because we won't go into this never ending positive feedback loop where the current keeps getting stronger and stronger and the flux keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. And this idea that the orientation of the current that is induced will produce a magnetic field that counteracts the, the, the change in flux, this is Lenz's law. Lenz's, Lenz's law. And once again, if, you, if that wasn't true, then you would have a violation of the, of the conservation of energy. So in general, whenever someone, if, if someone says, okay, well, this is the change in flux is happening in a certain direction, well, to think about which way the current would flow, you just have to say, well, what type of a magnetic field would each direction of the current produce? And that magnetic field should go in a direction that goes against your change in flux. So if the flux is increasing, the magnetic field that's induced by the induced current should make the flux decrease. If the flux was decreasing, then the induced magnetic field by the induced current should make the flux decrease less, or should make the flux should, should be additive to the flux.